In this episode, we talk about more weird, rare, and awesome G.I. Joe products from the 1980s. So, stick around. Dorks and Dorkettes, and welcome to Nostalgia Syndrome. My name's Rob, and in this episode, we're going to talk about more weird, rare, and awesome G.I. Joe products from the 1980s. This is the fifth installment of this because, wow, there were so many great products with the G.I. Joe name attached to them. It was one of the things about the 80s. It was a fertile ground for so many products to be grown and nurtured and be awesome. And it just wasn't G.I. Joe. There were so many great properties that had really weird, rare, and awesome products attached to them. Everything from Thundercats to the Masters of the Universe. And again, that's one of the things that made the 80s just so awesome was all of this stuff. You could brush your teeth with G.I. Joe. You could have a party that was G.I. Joe themed. You could go to school with G.I. Joe notebooks. You could erase your mistakes with a G.I. Joe eraser. There were just so many great things. And again, we're going to talk about a few of them. And they either fall into the categories of weird, rare, or awesome. And before we get started with the list, let me just say that this is G.I. Joe July here at my side of the laundry room. This is the month where I celebrate my birthday and I also celebrate my favorite toy line of all time. Not only the toy line, but the comics, the cartoon, the everything that is G.I. Joe. So without further ado, let's start our list with number one. The first thing on the list is something I will put into the weird category with just how they look. But it's something quite typical, and that is G.I. Joe birthday candles. Made in 1987, these birthday candles were the super deformed versions of some of the most popular characters at the time. You had everyone from Falcon, Sergeant Slaughter, Outback, to Armored Cobra Commander. They were all ready to be lit on fire and to help celebrate your birthday. I, for one, would have loved these. Yes, even at the age of 11, I would have loved to have these guys on one of my birthday cakes. I mean, I think by the time I hit 11, my parents had cut out birthday parties altogether. But I wish I could have had these. I love the super deformed style that they are in. I mean, they don't have the large head that a lot of super deformed things do, but... Just the squat frames and just the cutesy look of them. Even Gung Ho in his Marines dress uniform looks super cute. I mean, who would have thought? Number two on the list are G.I. Joe bandages or band-aids. They come from various years, from 85, 87, and 88. They featured characters on the boxes such as Flint, Repeater, and Snake Eyes. Now, I cannot comment on what the actual band-aids themselves looked like, but if they're like anything from the time period, they would either have a print of characters on them or be camouflaged. Unfortunately, I never got these or any other novelty band-aids growing up. I mean, I was lucky to get a band-aid at all. I mean, back in the day, if you got hurt, it was pretty much grab a napkin or a paper towel, apply pressure, and get back to playing. But I can only imagine how awesome you would feel to have G.I. Joe on your wound, making you feel better. Number three on the list is the Track and Attack Combo Set, made by NASTA in 1987. Now, this set took hide-and-seek to the next level. See, even G.I. Joe wasn't above waves of popularity, and they jumped on the wave of the laser tag phenomena at the time. Now, this set also fell into the Live the Adventure ad campaign from G.I. Joe, 
And believe me, you would definitely live the adventure with this set. Like I said, it takes hide and seek to the next level because one of you would get a pair of binoculars and one of you would get a Cobra emblem to wear. So the one person with the binoculars would search for the person wearing the Cobra insignia and would push a button to shoot a laser at them and hit the insignia and therefore tag them or find them in hide and seek. Unlike other versions of laser tag, this isn't two offensive players after each other. This is definitely one offense and one defense. And I could see it being really awesome. If you're running around your backyard in the middle of the woods, in some high grass or weeds, you know, hunkered down and hiding if you're the Cobra dude. And I could just see this being loads of fun. And like I said, anything that had laser tag-esque qualities to it at the time was awesome. I was 11 when this came out and I would have loved to play some G.I. Joe laser tag with friends if I had any friends. Number four on the list is a simple yo-yo made in 1988 by Yo's, the radical yo-yo company. These yo-yos featured many great properties. The G.I. Joe one featured an embossed picture of Repeater. It really takes me back. I do not remember Repeater being such a big and popular character at the time. I mean, I definitely dug the character and I really liked him because mostly it's his gun reminded me of the movie Aliens because it was on a swivel. But yeah, he was like the poster child of the 88-87 time period for G.I. Joe. Anyway, this yo-yo, very awesome looking. And they had other great properties within this line. Everything from Ghostbusters to Pee Wee Herman and my personal favorite, Donald Duck, appeared on Yo's, the radical yo-yo. They looked great. They probably handled okay. I've never been that adept at using a yo-yo, but I'm sure if I had a G.I. Joe one, I would be doing cradles and walking the dog and all that awesome stuff. Number five on the list is an action Begatella. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. In essence, it's one of those plastic pinball-esque games where you would pull back and a little silver BB would shoot around and land in certain areas that had different scores. This one came out in 1982, and it featured Grunt and Stalker on the Bagatella. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. As a neat little callback, there was an original Bagatella released in 1967 and featured the original G.I. Joe. The only difference was this one had a pistol grip and shot little white marbles around the board to make your score. It's just really neat to see something from the original 60s G.I. Joe match up with something from the 1980s. That just proves that G.I. Joe is timeless and always there to provide fun and entertainment for everybody. Now, number six on the list is Bubble Bath. Now, this Bubble Bath came in awesome character bottles. We had everyone from Repeater, Flint, Storm Shadow, Sergeant Slaughter, and even Bazooka. These are awesome. I had many of these, not the G.I. Joe ones, but many other character bottles growing up, and they look great on a shelf. They would look great on a shelf now for any collector. They look great. They are great. I remember seeing these in the store and always wanting them, but by the time they came out, I was a little bit too old for bubble bath, unfortunately. I was a big boy now, and I was taking showers. I didn't need no silly baths, but... I would have if I had one of these guys. Now, next on the list at number seven is a G.I. Joe flashlight released in 1982. Like with everything released in 1982, it had a very military vibe to it. It was olive drab, and it was one of those awesome flashlights that you would hold and it would face forward. I always wanted one of these type of flashlights. They were the type that Tunnel Rat had, after all. 
But also, like everything released in 1982, it featured Grunt as the poster child of G.I. Joe, and that was awesome. Now, the only thing that really separates this from any other military-type flashlight at the time was a G.I. Joe sticker and little Grunt face up at the top. Now, this flashlight featured a metal clip to hang it on your belt and a little signal button that you could interrupt the light so you could blink it. So you can let your friends know in the neighborhood, you know, when you're playing flashlight tag or whatever out in the dark where you were at. Beep, 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 beep. Anyway, awesome. Like I said, I always wanted one of these flashlights. And by the time Tunnel Rat came out or out back with the one on his leg, I desperately wanted one. We would go to Army Surplus stores and I would see them, but my parents would never cave and get one for me. No one's stopping me now. Maybe I will. Who knows? Now, number eight on the list is something that I've talked about before in the past of toys that I wish I had as a kid that never got. And that is the G.I. Joe train set made by Tyco. Released in 1983, this train set had it all. Not only did you get an awesome G.I. Joe train, but you also got little green or blue army men to represent Cobra and G.I. Joe. You got tanks, helicopters, little parachuting dudes, an awesome play mat to put it on. I mean, you had everything. This was an adventure in one box, and I wanted one so bad. I stumbled upon one in pieces at a Goodwill when I was little, and yeah, I had a couple of the cars, but that was it. I never had any of the little army dudes or any of the vehicles or like the big missile that would go on one of the train cars. Like I said, this is a complete adventure in one box and would have been so awesome to have. Now, number nine on the list are party supplies released in 1988. And man, these were awesome. You had tablecloths, plates, napkins, what have you. You were ready to have the best birthday party ever. Pair them with the candles that we talked about earlier and you were sitting on top of the world. Now, what's great about this is, again, it features repeater. I did, I'm still in shock over the exposure that he got, and I really don't remember him being that popular. But anyway, the, the companies that made this stuff must have chose him or Hasbro to be the poster child for the 88th season of G.I. Joe. Now, what's great is the napkins feature Shockwave. That's a character that was really, really awesome that really didn't get much exposure. So it was great to see him on the napkins. Now the plates featured Hawk, Sergeant Slaughter, and Roadblock. Three great characters that you would love eating cake off of or eating your pretzels or whatever party foods are available. Pair that with the awesome tablecloth and the party favors and yeah, you had the best birthday party in town. Now, number 10 on the list is the Atari video game, released in 1983 by Parker Brothers. Titled Cobra Strikes, this featured some of the most awesome artwork of any Atari box at the time. You had rock and roll jumping out of the way of a giant cobra blasting lasers out of its eyes. Ah, totally awesome. Now... The one thing I remember a lot about this game is the ads that would appear in comic books where you would have Hawk on one side and Cobra Commander on the other. It was beautiful artwork and it just made me want to play the game so much. Unfortunately, I grew up without an Atari and I never got a chance to play this game. But I can live vicariously through some of the videos that I've seen online and yeah, it's that Atari magic that we all know and love today. Anyway, this was just a quick list of 10 weird, rare, and awesome G.I. Joe products from the 1980s. This was number five in the series, and believe me, there's a couple more coming because they made so many great products in the 80s from G.I. Joe that 
yeah, it's hard to gather them all and to compile these lists, but it's so awesome to find these great treasures. One day, I hope to get some of them in my collection, but until that day, I can enjoy looking at them online and yeah, just keep on hoping. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that are being advertised down below by YouTube, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.